nothing we can do more than what we do for God in his kingdom. Amen. We're trying to pass through this earthly journey Amen. to make heaven our permanent home. Right. Amen. I said before we hitchhiking. Amen. Amen. We ain't got no permanent dwelling place down here. Right. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for the desire he has placed in our heart mm -hmm. to want to serve him in the beauty of holiness. Yes. Amen. 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 And the blood is spiritually applied in the waters of baptism. Hallelujah. I'll be seated. In his name. Yeah. The scripture says there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Mm -hmm. And that name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is why we teach that the baptism by the Son and Holy Ghost is not a Christian baptism. It is a foreign baptism to which the Roman Catholic Church yes. introduced sometimes after the Council of Nicaea in 325. And many encyclopedia and reference books bear witness to what I have said. The Roman Catholic Church changed water baptism from Jesus' name through Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in the second century, right around the time of the Nicene Council. Man. Now, in, in uh, I want you to just open up here in Ephesians chapter, chapter 3, and jump right in verse 4. Whereby when ye read, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now Paul is giving a teaching here. He explained when you read his epistles that you might have an understanding where he is coming from as he instructs the church in the ways of Jesus, read. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, uh -huh. that the Gentiles should be fo follow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Where by the what? By the gospel. Yes. Now how many times have I told you gospel literally means doctrine? And doctrine means instructions. What Paul is saying here that the only way that you can come into a knowledge of God is through the instructions or teachings, more or less, he has given to the church that you can come to that full knowledge. Now he says now to the Gentiles that they may also have a right to the a tree of life or to eternal life. Now Gentiles means those who are not of the Abrahamic fold which means the, uh, we were at one time Gentiles. But again, as I opened up, we were saved and cleansed by the blood of Jesus at the sacrifice he made at Calvary. Therefore, whoever is baptized in his name is covered by that blood and therefore or has transcended from a fleshly being to a spiritual being. Now, even though we're in a carnal or fleshly body, we are still spiritual beings because we have adopted the Spirit of God through the Holy Ghost that comes to indwell in all true believers. Amen. So again, we have to understand fully who we are in Christ Jesus. Now, in the book of Daniel, Lord, oh, let's find that place in times past. Let, uh, Daniel 3rd chapter. <coughs> Uh, where Daniel tries to explain that that in times past the knowledge of God was not uh, uh, revealed but after it has been revealed then you can't change the knowledge of God you can't change God's divine instruction I mean, we want to go in Daniel chapter 7 and extract time, jump right in at verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, 
which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. Yeah, here, here Daniel is prophesying concerning the dispensation of time. Read it. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Uh -huh. That's not really much goes here in verse 25. And he Amen. shall speak great words against the Most High. Now he's going to speak great words against God, the Most High, mm -hmm. is God. Read. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times of the beginning now, of Now, how many times have I said what you see today with the movement of the lesbian coalition and did I share the other night that they're now uh, trying to pass a law where a baby nine months old can be aborted? Amen. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that's, I mean, that's really ridiculous. Amen. Right. I don't know whether it's in some states now. I believe it might be in one state or they're trying to pass in one state. You might as well say you take a little tiny baby and kill it. That's right. And they say it's all up to the mother. The mother makes that decision. But again, Mother cannot make a decision to kill a baby that belongs to God. Right. Amen. Also belongs to God. Right. So we have to understand the time that we're in. And brother and sister, if God tarries, they're going to pass that law. Because you see the cowardice in so-called preachers and family members, husbands and wives, they won't stand up against such behavior. Amen. And any person who criticizes or claims to be for, uh, for life against abortion, they're ostracized. Amen. And the day is going to come, you lose your job if you are what they call pro-life. Yep, right. mm -hmm. So we're in a time now where God must split the sky because murder, God said, shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And a baby is an innocent being. And again, the scripture there record in the book of Exodus, he says, any person who sheds innocent blood, he will require that blood on their hands. Yeah, right. So when you take an innocent life, and what is more innocent than a baby? You tell me. Well, I don't care if it's uh, two or three months old, or two or two, three months in his mommy's womb. It's Amen. still an innocent creature. Amen. Amen. So the time here where there's no, nobody is against it. Nobody is, oh my goodness, look what they're trying to do. They don't do that. Only true life is trying to bear witness of this great truth. So when we understand that they're changing laws and times that God never established. So we have to understand our mission is to bear witness of this great truth found in this Bible and not to to deflect in any kind of way. Amen. Not to back down, don't cower down, no matter how they come against you like a flood. We today are the remnant church that the prophet Isaiah spoke about in the 23rd chapter believe, of his writings. And we have to understand, in the remnant church, remnant means what's left over. Amen. We today have got to stand up as never before and be counted. Don't turn your back on the scripture. Don't try to cower back like all these other hypocrite preachers. Amen. T.E. Jakes and all them other so-called uh, big-time preachers. We used to call them big-time preachers. Amen. They got 10, 15,000 member churches. Amen. They got membership, but they don't have a church. Amen. And if they have a church, it's not a church of God. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, somebody got to stand up and defend the faith once delivered. Now, take notes in... Uh, Ephesians, I mean, chapter 4. Jump right in at verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and of a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Read. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the speaking end. Speaking the truth Christ. in love may grow up. You never come into the church full grown. Amen. You come to the church as a baby. 
But a baby must learn how. From the word of God and the example the older brothers and sisters are setting before them. That's why it's very important how you carry yourself, and especially among people who are new to holiness. Amen. You can't wound a soul that is tender. Right. You can't wound a soul. You, know? you have to let your light shine, and you have to look past certain faults and see their need. As God said, I'll look past your faults and see your needs. Mm -hmm. Now this is to a degree. Amen. What I'm trying to say, somebody has to be the example setters. True light is the example setter for the rest of the world. That's why we have to keep our confidence about us and not be upset by what we see, not be upset by uh, people that come against us on the job, Amen. people who will right. take advantage of us on our job because uh, we are saying, uh, uh, my pastor shared a testimony with us uh, when he first got hired at the steel plants back in, in, back in the 1920s. And he said uh, he should carry his Bible. And on lunch break, he, he'd read his Bible. And uh, man walked up to him and smiled and said, you saved? And the pastor said, yeah, I'm saved. He said, the Bible said, if somebody hit you, turn another cheek. He said, yeah, the Bible still said that. And he hauled off and slapped him. Pastor said, he looked at the man, and, and, and Pastor said, big hand, he worked steal me all his life, so you know he was strong. Amen. And he said, the tears just run down his face. And he said, he punched out, turned around, walked to his car, and left. So, now, many of us could not took that kind of test. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I'm trying to show you, sometimes, when you are called to a high calling, you'd be surprised at the things you have to go through because you are called to a higher calling. Man. So we have to understand that the devil's going to come against us uh, here. They don't want certain people to have driver's uh, license. What, what, what is going on here? Driving license, hey, praise God, everybody's driving. Hey, Amen. And so, and beside the state, don't they get their pay? Amen. Don't they get their money? Amen. If you drive too fast, they still get their money? That's right. I got a, well, I didn't get a ticket, but he stopped me. He said, I ought to give you a ticket. Driving too slow on the expressway. I said, I never heard of that before. Amen. He said, oh, yeah, you can drive too slow on the I said, well, I never heard of it. He said, well, I'm not going to give you a ticket this time, but I'm going to give you a warning. I never heard of such driving too slow on the expressway. So people are faced with certain obstacles because of not necessarily who they are, but what they are in Christ Jesus. Right. This is where their touch comes from. And that's why we are singled out. And don't think they don't know who we Amen. are. They right. do. Yep. Praise God. They know exactly who we are. Mm -hmm. But once we understand, if we hold on to the faith once we live it, no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Amen. And the Bible says, He'll make the enemy your footstool. Right. All you got to do is hold on. Amen. Now we're dealing with the Word of God, and the Word of God comes to strengthen us, to encourage us, to motivate us, and most of all, to learn of him. Oh, yeah. A reverse of that next verse. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself. In now it's talking about the body, but it's really talking about your growth in the church of God. Read. This I say therefore and testify yes. in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their I mind. told you when you get saved, you can't do the things you used to do. Amen. You can't live the lifestyle you used to live. You can't go to the same places you used to go. You can't have the same friends you used to have. Read that verse again. Mm -hmm. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. Walk means to live uh -huh, as and other Gentiles as once you were. Before you got converted, you was a Gentile. Gentile means heathen. Amen. Read. In the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Bible class comes to educate a person. Yes. Amen. Sunday school is to educate a person into the knowledge of God. So that you know the difference between right and wrong. You know the moral principles that establish a quality of character that God is looking for. Without the instruction, you wouldn't know. Amen. Read. Because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, 
to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. You never learned in church that abortion is legal. Amen. You never right. learned in church that drunkenness is legal. Mm -hmm. You never learned in church that a man could go to bed with another man or a woman go to bed with another woman. You right. never learned that in church. Then yeah. why are they teaching that in churches? Because the churches today don't have God. You don't have the Spirit of God within them. So they'll teach anything because there are people who are looking for something and it may have a spiritual connection, but they don't want to make a sacrifice to follow true spiritual guidance. Mm -hmm. That's why the Holiness Church is so small and the five churches are so many. Amen. Right. You ever stop and think, how come? Mm -hmm. That's the reason why. Amen. They don't want the truth. They want a part of God but they don't want the truth of God. The rich young ruler went to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Mm -hmm. And when God told him the first part, I'm your mother and father, say I've done that. Pay your tithe, I've done that. But there's one thing that you like. Mm -hmm. You got a whole lot of wealth. I want you to go and sell all you have and really sell what you have and give it to the church and then come back and pick up your cross and follow Amen. me. The Bible said the man had too much wealth. All right. And he dropped his head and walked away from God. Mm -hmm. In other words, he denied eternal life. Why? Because he had things that he treasured more. What? His wealth, his comfort zone, his lifestyle. He treasured more than picking up his cross because know what God said. Now, when you sell everything, come back and pick up your cross. In other words, your responsibility and your determination through the tests and trials of life without complaining, without murmuring, and still press on toward the mind. Right. But he didn't want to do that. But he wanted to go to heaven. Amen. You can't go to heaven unless you're willing to make a sacrifice for God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Don't right. let these hypocrite preachers, not saying this to you too, Father. Don't let these hypocrite preachers uh, trick you into hell. Don't let them do that. Anytime you're striving for something, there's something you have to give up. Right. I don't care what what type of lifestyle you're in. Amen. It's, if you try if you trying to get a uh, 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 PhD, don't don't you have to go back to school to get it? Amen. And 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 because you got your master, that don't guarantee that you got your PhD. Oh, I got my master. Yeah, but if you want a PhD, you got to go back to school and get your PhD. Right. So I'm saying, when you are saved, you have to go through the representation of being a saved person. Amen. So therefore, the things I want, and I might not, uh, I might not need, but I want them. But if it conflicts with what God wants for you, I got to give that up. Amen. I might enjoy going to the bar, have me three or four beers, and. and how not with everybody else who have three or four beers, and, you know, and, and let's tell lies together, amen, and laugh together, you know, but you can't do that once you're saved. All that past is gone, but how do you know not to do that if you're not taught? Right. When the Ethiopian wanted to be converted, and he was, you know that man was crying from his heart for God to take one individual and tell one of his prophets, to go to that one individual because he wants to be saved. Any time a person is seeking after God, do you know something will happen in his lifestyle to cause that person to turn and come to a true church? Mm -hmm. Why does everybody not come to a true church? By the things, things I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. There's things they don't want to give up. Mm -hmm. Sisters, today you, you got to wear a head cover. Oh, oh no, no, I'm not going to go to that church. No, I can serve God, but I don't have to wear no head cover. If the Bible says you got to wear a head cover, you got to wear one. Right. But I know it's everybody who needs the church. Even though they send their ties, ask me, you still wearing your head cover? Oh, well, no, no, but you, you know, I've been thinking about going back to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you ain't left the church. You send your ties, but you ain't left the church. But the head cover is what I taught. Amen. And if you don't agree with what I teach, why send me any ties and why you won't come back? Right, Amen. Right. There's always an underlying reason. But some, first of all, they're convicted. Deep down in their heart because they know that somebody true like this right. Amen. Lord. But they don't want to make the commitment to follow the instructions of true life. But we get our instructions from God. Amen. I'm just a vessel to convey it to you. All right.
Hallelujah. This is God's word. Amen. And it's God's promise to him, right? Yeah, everybody in the world needs it. As long as I preach the truth, and when I stand for the judgment on the God, I said, I've done my best. Yes, Lord. And God's going to say, well done. Stand over here. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know that. In the bottom line, that's why I get up every day happy. Amen. And go to bed. Every night I got it. And I'll be singing every day. I just got, got happy. You know what? I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Amen. I drive my car, walk down the street. I may mean, not can walk fast, but you know I can still walk. Praise the Lord. Amen. Eighty-seven years old, eighty-eight years old, soon to be. Amen. Lord. Doctor that pronounced me half dead, he probably did himself. All right. Lord. Lord. He's seventy-two, he probably gone. Yes. <laughs> I'm still here. Lord. Yes, Lord. But not I, but still kidding. Amen. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, when you make a commitment to believe the word of God. Cast everything behind you Amen. and pick up your cross and follow after God. Listen, folks. When you get a second chance, some of us a third chance, some of us a fourth chance, mm -hmm. take advantage and don't play a game. You might play a game with others, but you can't play a game with God. Wow. He knows your thoughts from a far off. I said before, he knows what you're thinking tomorrow, and tomorrow ain't even come yet. Right. So let's not take advantage when God gives us a chance. Take advantage of that chance in right. you Lord. and learn how to be disciplined within yourself. That's why we teach Bible classes so, so strong. I want you to be disciplined within yourself. Control your own destiny. Don't let somebody else or the devil control your destiny. Right, the devil can't make you go to hell. And you get no, no, no loved one. Unless you're foolish. Unless you're weak. But the Bible passes to make you strong in Christ Jesus through the knowledge of God. Amen. Read. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard of him, and have been taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. That he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Oh, put off the former conversation. Conversation here in this context means life. Put off the former life. In other words, get rid of the former life. The, the things I used to do, the things I used to be. I put off that. Uh -huh. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Which is corrupt. Sinful. Ain't no good. Amen. Because what? The lust of the desires of the heart to do wrong. Amen. Read. Amen. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You've got to be born again yes. through a mental transaction. Man. Renewing of your mind. Uh, hold your place and get me Romans the twelfth chapter right quick. I want you to see this connection. Your mindset has got to be different than what it was before you was converted. Now what? How can your mindset be different if you're not taught a different mindset? All right. Amen. Amen. How can you graduate from math to algebra if you ain't first taught the basics of math? Amen. So here, uh, uh, what does the Bible say? Romans 12 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Watch. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That be ye transformed from this world, from the knowledge of this world, <laughs> by what? The renewing of your mind. You've got to change your mindset, but you can't change your mindset unless you are taught another way. Amen. That's why holiness is so very important. We are taught how to live. And many people will tell you, oh, I don't need you to tell me how to live. Yeah, you do need somebody to tell you how to live. If you ain't living right, if you talk about going to heaven, Amen. connect that with uh, the 10th chapter of Romans and jump right into verse 1. Abib says they got a zeal of God. Brethren, my heart's desire and pray to prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now, you know, God said he would that none should perish, but that all come to repentance before it's too late. Now, Paul saying concerning Israel, saying he, he wishes they would get saved, but read. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They got a zeal of God, they, they go to their synagogues and everything, but they don't have no knowledge of God. Amen. They don't know anything about the Lord Jesus except he came. And he's a prophet. Well, he was a prophet, but he was more than a prophet if you do your research. 
but they don't want to research in uh, the New Testament scriptures. The only thing they want to hold on to is the Old Testament scriptures. But the law was given to the prophet Moses, and the person who gave the law was Jesus. Lord, amen. Hallelujah. But they don't know that. Jesus is taken from the Greek word Yeshua, and Yeshua means Jehovah's Savior. And when God appeared uh, at that mountainside uh, uh, to uh, Moses, and he said, by the name of Jehovah, was I not known by these people? His name or proper noun is Jehovah. Amen. But Jehovah with the title of Savior, the Hebrew had a singular word, which is Yeshua. And Yeshua means Jehovah Savior. And Jesus is a Greek translation for the Hebrew word Yeshua. Oh, right. So we serve in the right God, and well, we know his name. Amen. But Amen. you got to know the difference between a proper noun and a noun. All right. God is not his name. Right. God is a proper noun for the noun. Or rather, God is, is, is the... Uh, 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 is the noun, the proper noun would be Jesus Amen. or Jehovah Amen. would be the proper noun. What's that other noun? They call it uh, well, a him and pro, uh, uh, pronoun. 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 Yeah, pronoun means for a noun. Amen. In other words, I can call Jesus God, but that's the <laughs> pronoun, not the proper noun. Amen. 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 So salvation is not by a title. Yes. Salvation has to be by the proper noun. Yes. And the proper noun revealed in the New Testament church is Jesus. That's why we are water baptized in the name of Jesus. And any person not water baptized in the name of Jesus is an error of the scripture and can't be saved. Amen. When Peter preached the first sermon, they asked, what did you do to be saved? He said, you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. He didn't say, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But they still teach. Baptism, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yeah, well, that's what Jesus said. Jesus never said it. He said in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. But Jesus is the Father in the creation, Son of redemption, and the Holy Ghost in the church. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But you don't have a one person, one personality, and that's Jesus. Amen. In the Roman Catholic Church, you got, they have three. God over here, he's the boss God. Another God, second God, that's Jesus. Then you got the third God in the corner, that's the Holy Ghost. Where's the Bible for it? The Bible says it, it, it's only one spirit. He be just four and four. One, one body and one spirit. Yep. Talking about the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in Romans 8 and 9, is it? Yeah. If any man had not the spirit of Christ, he none of his. But the first three that text, I want you to see the connection. Spirit of God and Spirit of Christ is held in the same context. Amen. Read it. Uh, Romans chapters. 89. Romans 89. Yes. If you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If so be the Spirit of God what? Dwell, in, dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Y'all see that? Amen. One he says Spirit of God, and another says Spirit of Christ. In the same context. He ain't talking about two different spirits because Ephesians 4 and 4 said this on you. One spirit. one spirit, Lord, and one body. Amen. There is one body and one spirit, one Lord, Jesus. Lord, one body. What the Catholic Church said is three. Amen. Lord, Hallelujah. But the Bible says, but one body. Yes. Read. And one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord means one God, one faith. Means one identity with that with that God and one baptism. The only one baptism is with the apostles of Sabbath, and that's the baptism in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, we have to understand, brothers and sisters, the time frame we're in. They are changing the law of God. But we opened up with the book of Daniel. They said they're gonna change it. They're gonna change times and, and, and season. They're gonna change these things. And they're changing them right now. But you can't change the Word of God because you are not responsible for the Word of God. Amen. You can't change God from being God. Whether you believe in God or not, you're still God. How do you So we're on a mission that is difficult because of all the spirit of unbelief. We're in a dispensation of time, which is the last dispensation, and we were called specifically for these last days. Isn't it something me and you were called for this time in history? 
Amen. the last days. That's nothing. The unbelief then was based on the church or the false church. Today you got so many false churches until you have to many you scratch your head. Well, what church is right? Baptist, Methodist? They never had all that back then. They had the Judaism and Christianity. Amen. Now Islam didn't come to six, seven hundred years later, down the road. So they really only had two religions. Judaism and Christianity. Now what you gonna believe? But now look what you got. Man, I I take the rest of the Bible class this year <laughs> and tell you all the religions you got to death. Amen. Jehovah Witness. Started by a drunken man. Uh-huh. And built up by a con artist. Amen. That's right. Said he was a judge and never was a judge. But he sat on a bench. How you do it? He talked himself through a city council. And he talked so good they said, Oh yeah, you are a judge. And ne- ne- never had a law degree. How you gonna be a judge and never had a law degree? Amen. Judge Rufus. That's right. You still call him a judge. Uh-huh. He judged the whole witness up until what it is today. Yep. One of the biggest con artists that ever lived. Amen. But what you have in, again, you've got T D J. Amen. Joyce Myers. Amen. And if you put the two together on a Sunday, you, you couldn't get an auditorium big enough. Nope. And look at you like. Yeah. Right. <laughs> a few seats vacant. And we teaching the truth. Lord. And they teaching a lie. Amen. Oh, Lord. That thing out. I tried and the Lord told me to stop. Amen. Amen. I used to scratch my head. How in the world? Uh, man, I'm teaching the truth and these people teaching a lie. Tell them a Merry Christmas. Christmas for the birth of Christ, and you can't find it nowhere in the Bible. Lord. But you can't out an auditorium. And we tell people the truth about Christmas, they get mad at us and, and want to walk away. Are oh, you trying to take away our Christmas? Uh, uh, Grinch, or whatever they call that. Going to take away our Christmas. They're going to take the children, Santa Claus, show him. Amen. If you let me. Amen. And, and, and your Halloween, too. Yes, sir. Amen. Easter Bunny too. Oh, we yeah. throw that all in. All in together. Amen. We're going to teach the truth to our children. Amen. Amen. We today, brothers and sisters, have got to uphold the bloodstained banner and never get weak. Never doubt that you maybe might be in a false church. you in the true church of God. Amen. And we back it up by scripture. Right. And I challenge any pastor, they've been watching me for over the years, challenge me. I dare you to challenge me. Amen. Try to cross-reference me out the Bible. Amen. They can't do it. The only thing they can do is keep their mouth shut Amen. and let me teach. Amen. So again, the Bible said we have not so learned Christ. And the only way that you can learn Him, you got to get your mind right. And the mind has to be renewed by biblical instruction. Romans, we're back in Romans uh, chapter 12. Read verse 2 again. And be not, and be not conformed to this world. The, uh, be not conformed to this world is the same as when God said, come out amongst them and be separate. Yep. Why? Why do you say be not conformed to this world? Don't identify in the world. You know you're talking about people in the world. You ain't talking about no trees or birds or nothing. You're talking about people in the world. You cannot have friends with people who are not in no church. Right. Now you be courteous to everybody. Don't misunderstand me. You are friendly to a certain extent to everybody. You don't carry yourself like an idiot. Amen, probably. Or you ain't say, oh, no, 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 get away from me. Yeah. No, you, you don't do that. Amen. But you don't. Come on, uh, we're going to have a, a little party at my house tonight. We want you to come. No, no, uh uh-uh. Amen. You know, I can't come to your party because I know what's going to be happening. Amen. You're going to be smoking and drinking, and I don't do that. Oh, right. oh, oh, you, you, you don't want to. Oh, oh, you're not friendly. No, not, 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 not that friendly. No, you got me right there. Yeah. I'm not that friendly because your lifestyle is different. Yes. Brothers and sisters, when you refuse to separate from people who are not right, when you refuse to leave. Drug dealers alone, Uh whiskey drinkers alone, cigarette smokers alone, next thing you know, you're going to be just like them. Uh That's why God said, come out and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. 
Yeah. I, how many times did he want Solomon? Twice. And Solomon was called the wisest of men. Yeah. When he got old, he became a fool, didn't he? Amen. God said, leave them women alone because they're going to turn you away from serving me. And he came down twice. That's how much he loved Solomon. And Solomon would not obey. And Bishop R.P. Paddock said, you can't find nowhere in the Bible where Solomon repented. So is Solomon in heaven? Well, I, I don't know, but I know one thing. If he didn't repent, he ain't in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Now these stories are put in the Bible for us to know and understand. Sometimes you can't just go back in that light and say, well, it's all right. Uh, God understands. Uh, it, that's a favorite saying. God understands. You know I got a weakness. That's why he teach you through Bible class and instruction that you don't have no weakness. But the weak say, I'm strong. How? Because I got knowledge now. I don't have to do that no more. Amen. But if you keep under the influence of somebody else who's in that, you're going to be just like that. Right. And what about God? If you're supposed to be serving. Amen. Think about it. So, many people do not receive all their blessings because they're still not completely sold out. And God will not take a person who is not completely sold out. Hear me somebody. Right. You know why he won't? Because he don't have to. Right. You have to serve him and him alone. You have to deny yourself and pick up your responsibility or your cross and then follow him how? Through the Bible. Amen. If you don't know how, keep reading the Bible. Keep going to Bible class. Keep going to Sunday school. You'll learn. Amen. But it's up to you to want to accept what you have learned or reject what you have learned. It's all up to the individual. That's why I say, can't nobody send you to the lake of fire but yourself. Right. Who's your worst enemy? The devil? No, yourself. Amen. Right, so let's get self right. Then right. everything else falls in place. Right. We today are on a mission. Let's hold up the mission that we have been called into. And that's to defend the faith once again. But I want to close with you, uh, chapter 3. Uh, chapter 3, verse 3, yeah. Amen. Chapter 1, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That you earnestly contend for the faith once delivered. There is not nothing new. Amen. God ain't never changed his mind about this and changed his mind about that. If he stated in his word, you got to wear a bell coming, you still got to wear it. If you change, if you said you're around between two and five, you can't cross the dress. Your women ain't got no business with pants in their wardrobe. Amen. Now, say, oh, you use pajamas. <laughs> well, don't, don't they have gowns? All right. Don't you wear gowns? Amen. Hallelujah. Pants <laughs> are for men in this dispensation of time. Amen. And the Bible said, man should not put on that which pertains to a woman, a woman ought not put on a man's garment. Amen. Or vice versa, she come out the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Men are not supposed to dress like women. Women are not supposed to dress like men. I said, if a, if a man came home from work with a dress on and walked through the door, what would she say? <laughs> I know what she would say. Oh, well, you, you need prayer tonight when you get to church. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Oh, I knew there was something wrong. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe walking kind of fun, but I didn't pay no attention to it. Right. Now I'm caught you with a dress. Mm -hmm. What about catching the one with pants on? Uh -huh. Amen. So God eliminated that. Women ought not to wear that pertain to a man. Man ought not put on a woman's garment. Case closed. Yeah. Well, they all had robes. Again, the robe was different. Man's robe was much more different than woman's robe. Otherwise, he never would have robed it. So you can't outsmart God. No matter how clever you think you might be. Amen. I'm saying this to understand, brothers and sisters. Knowledge can only come through instructions. But if the instructions are not presented to someone seeking knowledge, he'll never grow in his knowledge of God. Yeah. 
again, the Ethiopian put it He said, he's reading the Bible. And, and Philip said, what do you read? And he said, I really don't know, but I'm reading. You understand? No, I don't understand it. He was honest. A lot of people today, you tell them, uh, you Pentecostal, and you say, oh, I'm Baptist, I'm saved too. Yeah, yeah. okay. And that's the basis for an argument. A lot of times we don't argue with them. Amen. Except that Jehovah Witness, we don't, we don't go toe to toe with him. <laughs> I'm saying, if you're saved, why aren't we all speaking the same thing? That was a commandment. Yes. That you speak the same thing. Yeah. If we teach a head cover, you don't. Somebody, somebody ain't right. Yeah. If we teach against cross dressing, you believe in cross dressing, somebody ain't right. Yeah. You, you, can, you can go ahead and get drunk as long as you don't have to fool. You are you all the mac mac and fool when you get drunk. Yeah. While you're getting drunk. Yeah. When you change your mental metabolism, whether it's liquor or, 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 or drugs, you are changing what God made you. You are creating your own avenue of pleasure. The only pleasure we get is from the Holy Ghost. That's the only high we get is from the Holy Ghost. You can't get no synthetic high and make it through God's kingdom Amen. because God won't accept anything that's synthetic. Amen. That's why makeup, God is against makeup. Well, what's wrong with makeup? I don't know, but God's against it. Amen. He's against wearing earrings. I said in Genesis 35, when the first thing he told Jacob when he wanted to come back to God, he said, make him get rid of all them earrings. Amen. That's the first thing he called out. Amen. I'm saying, brother, sister, it's God's Bible, it's his word, it's his way, it's his kingdom, and can't nobody that wants to go to his kingdom not do it his way. Amen. Case closed. Amen. Amen. Now, you can't argue with me, you have to argue with God. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. First, he's the only person, amen, amen that we have to uh, come to. And uh, I just wanted to go to some of the scriptures real quick. One of the things that I was uh, thinking about when the prophet was bringing out the teaching concerning 
the wicked and false preachers that lie to us. Um, here's something that I found that was pretty interesting. We don't lie to us because we don't listen to them. You know, I mean, uh, when I was uh, in the false church, I was listening to them, but I knew something was going, something was wrong. Amen. And I was trying to find out with my whole heart what was going on. And I started trying to figure out what about this Christmas thing that some man flying through the sky. And then the biggest thing for me was tell, teaching the children these lies. But uh, when I heard Prophet Walker on the radio one one morning, one evening actually, uh, I just had to get to the man to hear some more. And uh, the rest is history. So, you know, I'm here and I'm here to stay. Amen. But uh, anytime you listen to a false preacher, he's going to tell you what you want to hear. And that's why you go to some of these uh, false, false churches. And sometimes, you know, people go to these false churches because of the multitude of people going to those churches. They have a lot of... Uh, you know, fine homes and cars and lavish lifestyle, but there's, like the prophet stated, there is no spirit of Christ in there, and that's why you've got to run from them. Run from the false church. Don't go to the false church thinking that there's something there for you. Uh, real quick, in uh, Psalm the 55th number, uh, turn with me if you would to number 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. They don't care nothing about your soul. They care everything about that pocketbook, though. Amen. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Isn't that something? And David said also in the Psalms 101, talking about that false preacher. Thank God we got the real deal here. Amen. Amen. Real deal. Don't worry about that. No more. Psalms 101 and 3. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Man, I, you know, I don't want to go around nobody that's smoking cigarettes. No. I don't want to be around nobody that's... I mean, you know, not, 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 come on now. Let's, let's put right. things in proper perspective simply because uh, the Bible said we were once in darkness. Mm -hmm. So you have to, as prophet stated to us, there's a way that you have to deal with it. But the point of the matter is we don't fellowship with uh, cigarette smokers. We don't yeah. fellowship with alcohol drinkers. We don't fellowship with people who celebrate uh, these pagan heathen festivals and customs. We don't fellowship with people that teach us lies. Amen. And um, so verse uh, 7 of 101 says, He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. That's the word of God. And that's Amen. why true light is so different. We're different than the world. And I'll tell you something else too. You know you're different when they don't really want, they don't want to invite you to their little parties that they have. But first time something goes wrong, they ask you, can you pray for me? Mm -hmm. Or can you pray for my so-and-so? Yep. Why? Because they know, they, they know you got the Spirit of Christ inside of you. Right. Let's keep the Spirit inside of you. Amen. Let's, keep it, let's stay happy when it comes to church. Let's stay happy and love each other. Be there for each other. Most of all, be there for our great Father. Amen? Amen. All right, let's stand up and do this. Have a good time tonight. Amen. 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 May the Lord watch. Amen. 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 While we're asking, one from another. In Jesus' name. Amen.